So we're hunting in what we feel is the prime time for whitetail. We've gotten to Indiana, we've gotten set up, and we're starting to learn about the new area we're hunting and the type of wildlife that we're coming in contact with. In this video, we're getting into the swing of the rut and we're learning about all the things that we're seeing and all the things that we're doing in Indiana. This channel is about adventure, good times with friends, cooking, reviews, tips, and much, much more. If you're into any of those things, please like and subscribe, and I'll share content as I'm able. We've learned this much so far. Indiana has a robust deer herd. Our area has immense amounts of deer sign. We're having encounters with deer on every outing, and we're about to experience the rut kick into full swing. The first morning hunt of this episode starts uh, with us hunting in an area on top of a ridge just in front of a bedding area that was uh, a pine thicket. Like many of the spots that we hunted in Indiana, uh, there are ridges. And so this morning, just like many other mornings, uh, deer literally pop up um, before you have really any idea that they're there. Uh, uh, uh. 
back. We just finished morning hunt. Kind of slow. Saw a couple does and a yearling, but other than that, nothing much else. We did a lot of rattling and some calling, and I don't know the weather. It's gotten really warm. It's supposed to get up to 80 degrees today. Definitely not going to help, but you can't see them if you're not in the woods. So I'm going to go back and get a bite of lunch and try again. Got to pack up all this stuff and then head down the ravine. This stand is a beautiful area, but uh, this is the reason why people need to stay in shape or get in shape before, before doing this because the hike getting up there was quite extensive. Not that far from the road, but it, you can look. That ravine goes down into another ravine, down into a creek bottom, and then to the road. And that's where it's supposed to get picked up. So, gonna get to it. Had I been in the market for venison, I could have punched my tag easily on this morning and many other mornings on this trip. With the wind changing in our favor, it opened up my favorite stand again, Coffin Corner. Setting up for this afternoon's hunt, I decided to make use of some Tink's 69 Estrus, uh, which is doe urine, to be, to be frank. I took some of this and put it on uh, a rag, attached it to a string, and then drug it behind me while I walked in, uh, in hopes to create a trail, a scent trail, so if there was a buck in the area, uh, and he was in pursuit of a, of a doe, he would follow the trail. I walked up the ridge of the stand that I was, I was hunting and kind of walked around in front of it. As I got set into the stand, I did some doe bleats and some light rattling uh, to try to gain some interest if there was a buck or deer within earshot. I gained some interest not long into the hunt as a young buck came cruising up the creek bottom where I had uh, placed the, the deer drag and used the Tink 69. Unfortunately, he didn't make the turn and come up the ridge uh, by my stand, but not long after, another small buck did, and he, he walked directly under my stand.
In both cases, these deer weren't anywhere close to being shooters, but it was really cool to see a reaction uh, to, to the strategies that I'd used with the Tink 69 and then also with the calling and the Doblees. No buck harvest in this video, uh, but stay tuned. There's much more action and much more to talk about as the trip carries on. Thanks for watching.